The flower adornments of Tra, the ten grounds, chapter twenty-six, commentary. The flower adornments of Tra has eighty-one rows and thirty-nine chapters, of which this is chapter twenty-six, the ten grounds. Why are these ten called grounds? All things that exist are born from the ground, grow because of the ground, come to maturity by means of the ground, and obtain liberation due the ground. Within the ground are found a variety of treasuries like gold mines, diamond mines, silver mines, copper, iron, and various other kinds of mines which people excavate. The ten grounds contain the mines of Buddhas, the mines of Bodhisattvas, the mines of healers and those enlightened to conditions, the mines of gods and people, and the mines of animals, hungry ghosts, and hell beings. In all the ten drama realms, there are mines. If we knew how to excavate them, then we could obtain a variety of treasuries, of treasures. The drama doors of the ten grounds contain all drama doors. There is an interconnection between them. If we want to cultivate the Bodhisattva path, it will come about through cultivation of the grounds. If we want to develop the Bodhisattva path. We will do it through development of the dharma doors, of the ten grounds. If we want to bring cultivation of the bodhisattva path to maturity, we will do it through maturation of the ten grounds. If we want to obtain liberation by means of the bodhisattva path, we even more must rely on the dharma doors of the ten grounds in our cultivation in order to gain that liberation. The dharma doors of the ten grounds make up. The twenty-six chapter in the Flower Adornment Sutra, and this is part one of the chapter. Sutra. At that time, the world honored one was in the royal palace in the heaven of the comfort from others' transformations in the hall of treasuries of money jewels, together with a gathering of great bodhisattvas. All these bodhisattvas, who were irreversible from Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, had assembled from the walls of the other directions. They dwelt in the states of wisdom in which all bodhisattvas dwell. Had entered the place of wisdom which all thus common enter, and diligently practiced without rest. They were well able to manifest all kinds of spiritual penetrations, and all that they did to teach. Transform, tame, and subdue living beings was done at the right time. In order to accomplish all bodhisattvas' great vows, in all worlds, in all compas, in all lands, they diligently cultivated all practices, without slacking even momentarily. They were replete with the bodhisattvas' blessing and wisdom, the the aids to the way by which they universally benefited living beings without. Shocking! They had arrived at the ultimate shore of a Bodhisattva's wisdom and experience. Commentary: After Vira Ben the Bodhisattva had finished speaking the Ten Transferences chapter, and before he began to explain the Ten Grounds chapter, at that time the world or not one. Shakyamuni Buddha was in the royal palace in the heaven of the comfort from others' transformations. In this heaven, others' bliss is easily transformed into one's own. The Buddha was in the hall of treasuries of many jewels, together with a gathering of great bodhisattvas, a limitless number of them, who were bodhisattvas in long standing, with the way virtual wisdom and cultivation. Requisite from them, as requisite for them to be irreversible form, from Anusara Samyak Sambuddhi. These bodhisattvas did not retreat from the unsurpassed right and equal proper enlightenment in either thought, conduct, or position. They had attained these three kinds of irreversibility: the unsurpassed right and equal. Proper enlightenment is the culmination of three levels of enlightenment: those of the two vehicles, the hearers, and those enlightened to conditions, obtain proper enlightenment. They are enlightened themselves, but they have not obtained right and equal enlightenment. 
and so they cannot enlighten others. The Bodhisattva's enlightenment is described as right and equal because they enlighten themselves, enlighten others, and cultivate Dharma doors equal to the Buddha's Dharma doors. Surpassed laws is the title given to Bodhisattvas because the Buddhas are above them. Their enlightenment is not unsurpassed. Each level of enlightenment is delineated. Delineated people cannot be something just because they claim to be. They must be recognized, such as by others, um, as such by others for it to count. The Buddhas can enlighten themselves and others and have perfected their enlightenment and practice. So they attain unsurpassed right and equal proper enlightenment. That is Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi, the great Bodhisattva spoken of here. Although they are not yet totally unsurpassed, still are irreversible, and in the future they are certain to become Buddhas. They had all assembled from the worlds of the other directions. Not all of those great Bodhisattvas come from the Saha world. They came from worlds, as many as the fine most of dust. They dwelt in the states of wisdom in which all Bodhisattvas dwell. They had entered in the place of wisdom which all Bodhisattvas dwell. They had entered the place of wisdom which all thus commons enter. Not only did they have the wisdom of Bodhisattvas, they also had the wisdom of a Buddha, though not quite so profound, and they diligently practiced without rest. They were courageously, vigorous, and diligently cultivated the Bodhisattva path without resting. They were well able to manifest all kinds of spiritual penetrations. They all had various kinds of wisdom and manifested all kinds of spiritual penetrations. And all that they did to teach, transform, tame, and subdue living beings was done at the right time. The vocation of a bodhisattva is to teach and transform living beings, tame and subdue living beings, and cause all living beings quickly to accomplish Buddhahood all at the right time. Sometimes, if one speaks inappropriately and teaches living beings before their rules have repented, all the time is right by blasting Dharma at them, they cannot receive it. They get scared, scared have doubts, and they never want to listen to the Buddha Dharma again. Bodhisattvas teach and transform living beings at the most appropriate moment. It is just like planting seeds. If planted at the wrong time, they will not come up and the planting will have been done in vain. If one plants the seeds at the exact time they should be planted, they will grow. Right at the time the seeds of Bodhi should be planted. Bodhisattvas break open the mighty ground of living beings, teach them to bring forth the thoughts for Bodhi, and plant the seeds which gradually grow, repent, and yield a harvest of liberation. That is the meaning of at the right time. In order to accomplish all Bodhisattvas' great vows in all worlds, in all compass, in all lands, within the Shetra lands of all Buddhas, they diligently cultivated all practices. They were heroically vigorous and diligently cultivated all the doors of conduct that all bodhisattvas cultivate. Without slacking, even momentarily, not even for an instant were they lazy, but they were ever vigorous. They were replaced with a Bodhisattva's blessings and wisdom, the aids to the way by which they universally benefited living beings without shirking. They not only cultivated for themselves, but for all living beings as well. They never stopped, never got tired, and were never lazy. They would never say, I've had it. I'm going to quit cultivating the Bodhisattva way and stop benefiting living beings. They weren't like that. They always wanted to benefit living beings. They had arrived at the ultimate shore of a Bodhisattva's wisdom and experience. They had reached 
the ultimate show of wisdom and skilling means of all bodhisattvas, the highest position, and had obtained the purity of nirvana that consists in permanence, bliss, true self, and purity. Sutra they manifested entry into birth and death as identical with nirvana, yet they did not renounce the cultivation of bodhisattva practices. They were skilled at answering all bodhisattvas' dhyanas, liberations, samadhis, samapatis, spiritual penetrations, and clear knowledges. In all they did, they obtained comfort. They acquired all bodhisattvas' comfortable spiritual powers, and in an instant, Without movement or exertion, they could go to the assemblies of all the Skamans Buddhimandas, act as leaders of the assembly, and request the Buddha to speak Dharma. They protected and upheld the Buddha's proper Dharma will. They used a vast, great might to make offerings to and serve all Buddhas. They always diligently practiced the deeds which all Bodhisattvas practiced. Their bodies universally appeared in all worlds. Their voices reached throughout the Dharma realms of the ten directions. Their mind's wisdom was unobstructed. They universally saw the merit and virtue of all bodhisattvas of the three periods of time. They had already cultivated and obtained perfection in ineffably many compass they could not completely be described. Commentary, they manifested entry into birth and death as identical with nirvana. Bodhisattvas who cultivate the Bodhisattva's way have freedom over birth and death, and for them, samsara is just nirvana, and afflictions are just bodies. Everything about them is a manifestation. They manifest all sorts of births and manifest various kinds of deaths. They appear as various kinds of living beings from gods, humans, and asuras to the animals, hungry ghosts, and hell beings. Within every destiny, bodhisattvas appear to go through birth and death. They are born in various ways and influence those around them to bring forth the thought for Buddhi. They die in various ways in order to cause living beings to understand the pain of samsara. Therefore, they manifest entry into birth and death as identical with nirvana. How one is born, how one dies, how birth and death become nirvana. Yet they did not renounce the cultivation of bodhisattva practices. Although bodhisattvas manifest all those births and deaths and sufferings in order to teach and transform living beings and then cultivate ascetic practices and enter nirvana, Still, they return to continue cultivating the Bodhisattva way among living beings. Wherever they are, they do not renounce that cultivation. They cultivate the Bodhisattva path to help living beings and cause them to resolve themselves upon Bodhi. They were skilled at entering all Bodhisattva's dhyanas, liberations, samadhis. They were good at realizing the dhyana samadhis the liberations and the proper concentration and proper receptiveness that bodhisattvas cultivate, and uh, samapatis, spiritual penetrations and clear knowledges. Samapati is a Sanskrit word which translates as arrival at equanimity, which refers to the state reached when one is free of torpor and agitation. They also had attained the wonderful functioning of various kinds of spiritual penetrations, the three clarities and the six penetrations. The three clarities are the clarity of the heavenly eye, the clarity of the heavenly ear, the clarity concerning former lives. Another rendering of this list is the clarity of the heavenly eye, the clarity concerning former lives, the clarity of the extinction of our flows. The six penetrations are the penetration of the heavenly eye, the penetration of the heavenly ear, the penetration of others' thoughts, the penetration of former lives, the penetration of the extinction of our flows, the penetration of spiritual fulfillments. In all they did, they obtained comfort in all of their activities. 
They were independent and sovereign. They acquired all bodhisattvas' comfortable spiritual powers. They could manifest the birth and death, nirvana, and the, the, the cultivation of the bodhisattva way in all places. At all times, they were at ease with the power of wonderful functioning of their spiritual penetrations, just as all bodhisattvas are, and in, all, in an instant, without movement or exertion, they could go to the assemblies of all the common bodhimandas. You see the bodhisattva as just walking along, but he can go anywhere in the ten directions within the space of a single instant, with no need to move or act. You see him eating, but his spiritual powers have already taken him in the assemblies of the Bodhimandas of all thus come ones. You see the Bodhisattva as asleep, but he has already transformed bodies and gone to other Buddha lands. You see the Bodhisattva as doing something or as doing nothing, but he can be transforming bodies and going to limitless and boundlessly many other worlds to teach and transform living beings. He has that kind of wonderful ability. So the Bodhisattvas at all times and in all places go to see all Buddhas of the ten directions, draw near and pay their respects and make offerings to them. Don't think they are just asleep. If it's just an ordinary person who's asleep, of course, it's not very interesting. They may be having nightmares about wanting to jump off the Golden Gate Bridge or the Empire State Building. In the dream, they may even fall from the skyscraper and die. But when they wake up, they are still in their beds. They may dream of being the uh, 555th person to jump from the Golden Gate Bridge only to find themselves on the couch upon awakening. That is an ordinary person's dream state. The state of a Bodhisattva also resembles dreaming, but the Bodhisattva goes off to rescue living beings and to teach and transform them. Wherever he sees being experiencing disaster, he manifests a body and goes to save them. Bodhisattvas also act as leaders of the assembly and request the Buddha to speak drama. Someone must request the drama or the Buddha does not speak it. Someone should remember this three times, bows, kneels, and requests that the Buddha speak the drama and turn the drama will. They protected and upheld the Buddha's proper drama will. Bodhisattvas go everywhere to protect and support the assemblies of the Bodhimandas of all Buddhas, just as here, where we daily turn the proper Dharma wheel, yet no one realizes it, and this country's disciples treat it as a very ordinary event then. In fact, it is an earth-shaking, heaven-startling matter. They used a vast great might to make offerings to and serve all Buddhas, they always diligently practiced the deeds which all Buddhas practice. Their bodies universally appeared in all worlds. Bodies of theirs went everywhere in all worlds of the ten directions. Their voices reached throughout the Dharma realms of the ten directions. In all the deeds the Bodhisattvas cultivated, their bodies manifested in all worlds, and the sound of their voices also manifested in the Dharma realms. Of the ten directions, their mind's wisdom was unobstructed. Though their minds and their wisdom were perfectly fused without obstruction, they universally saw the merit and virtue of all bodhisattvas of the three periods of time. They could see all the merit and virtue of all bodhisattvas of the past, present, and future. They had already cultivated and obtained perfection. They had cultivated to perfection the merit and virtue of all bodhisattvas. In ineffably many compass, they could not completely be described. In compass so long, one still could not portray them. Sutra, their names were Vara Treasury Bodhisattva, Jod Treasury Bodhisattva, Lotus Treasury Bodhisattva, Virtual Treasury Bodhisattva, 
Treasury of Lotus Virtual Bodhisattva, San Treasury Bodhisattva, Treasury of Surya Bodhisattva, Treasury of Undefined Moons Bodhisattva, Treasury of Adornments Universally Manifesting in All Countries Bodhisattva, Treasury of Varokana Wisdom Bodhisattva, Treasury of Wonderful Virtuous Bodhisattva, Treasury of Trandana Virtuous Bodhisattva, Treasury of Flower Virtuous Bodhisattva, Treasury of Kusuma Virtuous Bodhisattva, Treasury of Utpala Virtuous Bodhisattva, Treasury of Heavenly Virtuous Bodhisattva, Treasury of Blessings and Virtuous Bodhisattva, Treasury of Unobstructed Pure Wisdom's Virtual Bodhisattva, Treasury of Merit and Virtuous Bodhisattva, Treasury of Narayana Virtuous Bodhisattva, Treasury of Non-Defilement Bodhisattva, Treasury of Freedom from Filth Bodhisattva, Treasury of Versatile Velocans Adornments Bodhisattva, Treasury of Great Bright Light Nest Bodhisattva, Treasury of Pure Awesome Virtuous Light King Bodhisattva, Treasury of Gold Adornments and the Light of Great Merit and Virtuous King Bodhisattva, Treasury of Adornments of All Marks Pure Virtuous Bodhisattva, Treasury of Fire Blazing Virtuous and Adorning Marks Bodhisattva, Treasury of Blazing Light Bodhisattva, Treasury of Light Illumination Constellation King Bodhisattva, Treasury of Empty Space and Unobstructed Wisdom Bodhisattva, Treasury of Unobstructed Wanderer's House Bodhisattva, Treasury of Dharani Merit and Virtues to Maintain the Vows of Living Beings Bodhisattva, Treasury of Theodormans Bodhisattva, Treasury of Sumeru Virtues Bodhisattva, Treasury of Purity of Merit and Virtues Bodhisattva, The First Commons Treasury Bodhisattva, Treasury of the Buddha's Virtues Bodhisattva, Moon of Liberation Bodhisattva, and all the other numberless, limitless, boundless, incomparable, uncountable, indescribable, inconceivable, unlimitable, and ineffable multitudes of Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, with Vara Treasury Bodhisattva as their leader. Commentary Their names were as follows. There was one Bodhisattva called Vara Treasury Bodhisattva. Another Bodhisattva was called Jod Treasury Bodhisattva. There was another Bodhisattva called Lotus Treasury Bodhisattva. There was another Bodhisattva called Virtual Treasury Bodhisattva. There was another Bodhisattva called Treasury of Lotus Virtual Bodhisattva. Another Bodhisattva was called Sun Treasury Bodhisattva. There was another Bodhisattva called Treasury of Surya Bodhisattva. That is to say, Star of Sun's Bodhisattva. There was another Bodhisattva called Treasury of Undefined Moon's Bodhisattva. Another Bodhisattva was called Treasury of Adornments Universally Manifesting in All Countries Bodhisattva. That Bodhisattva, a straw of adornments, manifested in all worlds. There was another Bodhisattva was called Treasury of Varukana Wisdom Bodhisattva. Another Bodhisattva was called Treasury of Wonderful Virtuous Bodhisattva. There were another Bodhisattvas called Treasury of Tradana Virtuous Bodhisattva, Treasury of Flower Virtuous Bodhisattva, Treasury of Kusuma Virtuous Bodhisattva. Kusuma means large flowers. Another Bodhisattva was named Treasury of Utpala Virtuous Bodhisattva. Utpala means azure, azure flowers. Another Bodhisattva was called Treasury of Heavenly Virtuous Bodhisattva. There was another Bodhisattva named Treasury of Blessings and Virtuous Bodhisattva. Another Bodhisattva was named Treasury of Unobstructed Pure Wisdom's Virtual Bodhisattva. Another Bodhisattva went by the name of Treasury of Merit and Virtuous Bodhisattva. Yet another Bodhisattva was called Treasury of Narayana Virtuous Bodhisattva. One was named Treasury of Non-Defilement Bodhisattva. Another Bodhisattva was called 
Treasury of Freedom from Filth Bodhisattva. There was yet another Bodhisattva who was known as Treasury of Versatile Eloquence Adornment Bodhisattva. Treasury of Great Bright Light Nets Bodhisattva was one Bodhisattva's name, while another Bodhi, another one Bodhisattva's name was Treasury of Pure or awesome, Some Virtuous Light King Bodhisattva. Furthermore, there was a Bodhisattva called Treasury of Gold Adornments and the Light of Great Metro, uh, Married and Virtuous King Bodhisattva. Present was also Treasury of Adornments of All Marks Pure Virtuous Bodhisattva, as well as a Bodhisattva called Treasury of Fire Blazing Virtuous and Adorning Marks Bodhisattva. Treasury of Blazing Light Bodhisattva was there along with Treasury of Light Illumination Constellation King Bodhisattva, Treasury of Empty Space and Unobstructed Wisdom Bodhisattva, and Treasury of Unobstructed Wondrous Sounds Bodhisattva. There was further a Bodhisattva who had the name Treasury of Dharani Merit and Virtues to maintain the vows of living beings Bodhisattva. Treasury of Sea Adornments Bodhisattva was in the assembly, and so too was the Bodhisattvas called Treasury of Sumeru Virtuous Bodhisattva. There was another named Treasury of Purity of Merit and Virtuous Bodhisattva. Another was called the First Gamma's Treasury Bodhisattva. Yet another Bodhisattva went by the appellation Appellation Treasury of the Buddha's Virtuous Bodhisattva. Another Bodhisattva was named Moon of Liberation Bodhisattva. That Bodhisattva and all the other numberless, limitless, boundless, incomparable, uncountable, indescribable, inconceivable, um, illimitable, and ineffable multitudes of Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas. There were so many that you could not measure them. But certain their bounds, compare them to anything, count them up, define them, or conceptualize them if you tried. The great bodhisattvas were there with Vara Treasury Bodhisattva as their leader. Sutra, at that time, Vara Treasury Bodhisattva received the Buddha's spiritual power and entered the Bodhisattva's great wisdom light samadhi. After he entered that samadhi, in each of the ten directions were worlds beyond the number of fine most of dust in ten million Buddha lands, each of which contained Buddhas to the number of fine most of dust in ten million Buddha lands, and bearing the same name, Vara Treasury. Commentary at that time. Vara Treasury Bodhisattva received the Buddha's spiritual power and entered the Bodhisattva's Great Wisdom Light Samadhi. Because he was receiving the awesome spiritual power of Shakyamuni Buddha and of all the Buddhas of the Ten Directions, he entered the proper concentration and proper reception that Great Bodhisattvas enter. After he entered that Samadhi, then something wonderful occurred in each of the Ten Directions were worlds beyond the number of fine modes of dust in 10 million Buddha lands, each of which contained Buddhas to the number of fine modes of dust in 10 million Buddha lands, each of the worlds to the number of fine modes of dust in 10 million Buddha lands, had in it Buddhas to the number of fine modes of dust in 10 million Buddha lands, all bearing the same name, Vara Treasury. They were all called Vara Treasury Buddha, Vara Treasury Thirst Come One. Sutra, all those Buddhas appeared before him and said, Good indeed, good indeed, Vara Treasury, that you are able to enter this Bodhisattva's great wisdom light samadhi. Good man, this is due to the combined act of Buddhas throughout ten directions, so the number of five modes of dust in ten million Buddha lands. It is also due to the power of the basic vows and the awesome spiritual might of Varukana. Thus come one a heart of right and equal enlightenment. And it is due to the power of your supreme wisdom. 
they wish to cause you to have the light to break all inconceivable dramas for all bodhisattvas that is to bring about entry into the ground of wisdom the gathering in of good rules the skillful selection of buddha dramas commentary all those buddhas appeared before him they manifested before vara treasury bodhisattva in samadhi and said good indeed good indeed vara treasury that you are able to enter this uh, bodhisattva's great wisdom light samadhi they praised him saying you are really good you are really fine vara treasury that you can assess into this right concentration and right reception of the great bodhisattva's light of wisdom good man this is due to the combined aid of buddhas throughout the ten directions so the number of five most of dust in ten millions in buddha lands they are all helping you enter this samadhi they explained it is also due to the power of the basic vows and the awesome spiritual might of Varukana, thus come one a heart a bright and equal enlightenment it is due to the unsurpassed one a bright and equal enlightenment whose light pervades all places the power of that buddha's basic vows and his awesome spiritual might aid you to enter this proper concentration and it is due to the power of your supreme wisdom the power of supreme wisdom that you obtained from cultivating bodhisattva practices enables you to enter this right samadhi they wish to cause you to have the light to speak all inconceivable buddha dramas for all bodhisattvas another reason you are able to enter this great wisdom light samadhi is because the buddhas of the ten directions want you to have the light of wisdom to speak all the inconceivable dramas expressed by all buddhas for the sake of all bodhisattvas that is to bring about to bring about entry into the ground of wisdom of wisdom then you will be able to cause all living beings to enter the ground of wisdom it is to bring about the gathering in of good rules it is so you can collect together all the good rules of living beings amassed in cultivation that you are enabled to enter this samadhi it is to effect the skillful selection of buddha dramas in order to make use of the selective drama eye so as to understand all dharma spoken by all buddhas you are able to enter this great wisdom light samadhi